Good afternoon, everyone. It's Sister Gwendolyn, and I'm back here today for the Morning Devotion YouTube channel. And we're still here with Sejo's parents in California. But we are, uh, I'm on a mission to get through this book of Matthew before the coming of the Lord. So I'm working, um, we're working our way slowly through the book of Matthew. And I kind of feel like I'm slicing off small pieces of sirloin steak or tenderloin as we dive into one meaningful passage after another. And these passages, are loaded with great stories that we can understand and then we can apply them to our own lives and we can hold claim to the fact that Jesus is the same today as he was back in that time period so remember that God never changes friends so let's go ahead and read from Matthew chapter 8 verses 23 to 27 where Jesus is calming the storm very famous uh, passage here and I will be reading from the New King James Version. Now when he got into the boat we're referring to Jesus his disciples followed him and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves but he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Now, I just want to uh, for us to recall that Jesus was getting into the boat to get away from all the crowds. Remember that from the last devotional and that Jesus had these two very famous interactions with two men. One of the men wanted to follow Jesus after he had taken care of all his earthly responsibilities. And then the other man, no matter how enthusiastic he, he must have been, he did not realize that Jesus was requiring him to give up all the comforts of a regular life. Now we have Jesus and the disciples. They're in the boat. They're on the Sea of Galilee. And if you've never been there, it's a very scenic setting. And it's more of a huge lake. It's like a huge lake in northern Israel. Massive large rocks around the edges. But because it's surrounded by hills, a storm can just spring up out of nowhere with no warning. And even these very experienced fish fishermen aboard the boat were afraid of the storm. Now, I think that's saying a lot for professional fishermen who worked right there on that lake as fishermen professional for years. Now, the Sea of Galilee, I'm going to give you its dimensions, 13 miles long, 7 miles wide, 150 feet deep in some areas. And listen, that is not a recreational lake. Um, a storm came upon them and the waves were splashing over the boat. And yes, they were sincerely concerned. And yet their teacher, the rabbi, Jesus, he was sleeping away. And Jesus was in his human form. He had the requirement to sleep. His body needed to rest. And he was subjected to the physical laws of nature, just like the rest of us. But as the creator of the world and the one who had come to do the difficult task of dying on the cross for the sins of mankind, he had authority over everything, including the movement of air, the molecules of water, and storm formation in general. Jesus made it all, and all of it was subjected to his commands. And I don't think this was fully understood yet. The disciples just hadn't grasped uh, just how much Jesus was able to do exceedingly greater than their hearts could imagine. So I want to know what your thoughts are on this uh, part of the story, friends. Now, Jesus was awakened by the disciples, and he told them they were going to the other side of the lake, and yet they had forgotten his command. He said, we're going to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and they were overcome with fear, and they forgot 
the command or the report of the Lord. Remember that precious passage in Numbers chapter uh, 23. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Whatever he has said, it will surely come to pass. Amen. I love that verse. And I bet there are many people out there today who have not believed on the word of the Lord spoken over their lives. And maybe this Bible passage will strengthen you today. Whatever God has told you, friends, it is going to come to pass. Now, it may not come to pass uh, or play out like our human mind conceives, but it will surely come to pass. And these disciples that were basically saying, we're all going to die, but that was not the word of the Lord. So proclaim the word of the Lord over your, yourselves today. And I believe that Jesus knew ahead of time that the weather was going to be rough out there. And he was using this storm as a teaching tool for the disciples. And he might have been testing them to see if they believed his report. And we've all been there, you know, letting our flesh and our fear take hold. And then we lose our sense of Jesus' presence. And then everything goes haywire. And Jesus, he had never lost control of the situation, and his word was a definitive command. We are departing this crowded area, and we are going to the other side. So, you know, just don't question the master, right? <laughs> okay, well, again, I know that we are all guilty of doing that. And I love the next part of this passage where Jesus arose and you know i want to hold on to this spot of the passage for a minute jesus arose in the boat and then everything changed and remember when jesus arose from the tomb everything changed and in this situation jesus was standing in authority of nature and he was like a mighty orchestra director and he was telling the woodwind section hush be quiet no more playing and the waves and the winds, they ceased. And there was a, a mighty, uh, a musical term for you, a uh, decrescendo, a hush. And the disciples, they were amazed. They marveled. And just like we marvel when we see the mighty hand of God working. So, you know, just some things to consider about this passage for our own lives. So I want to talk about this just for a moment. One of Jesus' names is the Omega, and it means the ending. You, you've heard him say of himself in the book of Revelation that I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And in this story, I believe Jesus was really operating as the Omega, and uh, he has seen the end. He is the spirit of prophecy. And he knows exactly what storms each of his children are going to go through in their lives. And he's on the throne. He's not sleeping. Father God is not sleeping. The Holy Spirit is clearly not sleeping. So we have the Godhead Trinity constantly training us, uh, teaching us, carrying us through one storm after another and all of these situations are meant to prepare us for eternity but remember friends that our lives uh, are like a vapor and we are here today and we're gone tomorrow this this earthly suit is going to pass away so whatever we are learning in this human experience it is to prepare us for the the millions and trillions of years that we will be living in the presence of the lord with all of his saints and so he is grooming us for eternity through all of these storms and he is our umbrella and uh, he's our weatherman too and he's the conductor of the waves and the winds and all the elements and it's all being done for his glory amen so so please friends i want you today place yourself inside the boat in this story and pretend that you are one of the disciples on this boat and you are allowing jesus to grow your own faith and it is indeed a great voyage at sea
All right. Well, it has been uh, it's been a blessing to be with each of you today, and let's pick up again where we left off in the next devotional. Talk to you soon, friends.